Hi all, uh, welcome to this uh, Legs Matters Live Lounge Natter. Um, I'm so, so pleased to be here today and actually this is going to be my favourite event of the whole of the week. Uh, my name's Leanne Atkin, I'm a vascular nurse consultant at Mid York's NHS Trust and I'm the chair of Legs Matters. Um, I'm joined today uh, by a true uh, warrior, really, um, and I think the set, the name of this session, um, Life Lessons from a Legos Warrior, just really brings home um, my uh, true admiration uh, for the lady I'm just about to introduce. So um, I'm very, very pleased to be joined today by Tracy, um, who is one of our patient partners, uh, but also a patient of mine within my local NHS service. So Tracy, do you want to quickly introduce yourself and just give a background of how you know me? Hi, um, I'm Tracy, and as Leanne said, um, I've suffered with a leg ulcer for many years, most of my adult life really, and I've known Leanne because she's been treating me throughout um, as my vascular nurse. Um, and I'm a patient representative now for Legs Matter, um, which is really important to me because I just want to help other patients in the same situation in, in, in any way I can. Fantastic. So um, we have pre-recorded the, the, our conversation um, on video, um, which we're going to stream to you in a short while. During this, though, we are here live. So please, please put any questions that you like within the questions and answers box. Or if you want to put anything within the chat box, we'll be reading them. And then we'll be, take the opportunity after you've watched the video um, to discuss these in more detail. Um, so all I'd say is handkerchiefs at, at the ready um, and let's hear um, from an amazing Legos warrior. Hi Tracy, thanks for joining us for this little Legs Matters Natter. So mm -hmm. just to start, can I just ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah sure, uh, my name's Tracy, I'm 41 now, um, I've got two teenage children, well one of them's nearly 21 actually, um, and um, we, we have two dogs and we run our own business as a family. Brill. So I've known you for some years now and obviously when we first met your children was very little like mine were and how quickly time flies. <laughs> so, so going back to that, when did you first start to notice something were wrong with your legs? Um, right at the beginning was when I was pregnant with my first son um, and I woke up one day and my left leg was swollen, red, um, very painful. So um, I went to the hospital and they diagnosed a, a deep vein thrombosis. Um, then following that treatment, um, I went on, then went on to have my son. Um, and then from then on, my veins were sort of, uh, the skin around my veins on my ankle and my left leg were very thin and the skin was very papery. Um, it was very delicate. And when he was around three years old, um, the, the skin broke down um, and that developed into what I now know is a leg ulcer. At the time, I didn't know what it was. It was just a sore on my leg that just didn't heal. Um, and I didn't really know what to do or, or where to go with it, to be honest. So where did you go initially? Uh, I first went to um, the pharmacy um, and they just gave me some dressings. They didn't suggest it could be anything else other than just a, a cut on my leg. Um, and then I ended up going to the doctors who then referred me to you. And, and can you remember what I talked to you about when you first met me all that time ago? I think you, obviously you were the one that first said the words leg ulcer, which I'd never even heard of. I mean, at the time I must have been 22, 23, um, never even heard of a leg ulcer. Um, so you were the first one that said it and, and I remember you saying at the time that I needed to have this compression bandaging on which again is something I've never even heard of um, and I think you said at the time we were hoping to heal it within about uh, 12 weeks and at the time I thought that's crazy what on earth is going on um, and it did heal within that 12 weeks that first time. And can you remember, obviously you tell me that you didn't know anything about the word even leg ulcer, uh, but can you remember any of the emotions that you felt when you got told it was a leg ulcer? Yeah, I just, I just was confused at first because again, I didn't really understand. I knew I'd had problems with my veins, obviously, because of the, the deep vein thrombosis I'd had, but I don't think I was really warned at the time that it could lead to other issues in the future. 
Um, and so I remember feeling a little bit confused about what a leg ulcer was. And at the time, it seemed like um, an awful long time to have a bandage on. Um, and I was just, I remember feeling quite conscious of the look of it and of the smell of it. And, and at the time, it was um, before I got seen by you, um, I remember my shoe was always like, the, the wound would actually leak into my shoe all the time. And, and I remember I was having driving lessons at the time and I was so, so embarrassed because every time I'd go for a driving lesson and they'd obviously have the, the windows closed on the car, I remember being very, very conscious of the smell of my leg before it got before I got seen by you and it got properly covered and, and the compression put on. And, and this is why I think it's really beneficial of you sharing your story, Tracy, because many people, when they think of leg ulceration, they think of a 70-year-old a doddering around lady, if you like, they don't realise that it can affect multiple age groups. And even if you're a 70 fit year old lady who's playing badminton three times a week, you can still develop a leg ulcer. And, th and that's the beauty of you sharing your story with us. Many people don't like compression therapy. Um, it, you know, many of our patients uh, can see it um, on their first attraction, their first introduction to it as, as a negative thing. What did you think of compression therapy when you first started off with it? I thought it was unusual. I'd ne like I said, I'd never heard of it before. And, and the thought of you putting four layers of bandaging on my leg just seemed bizarre. Um, I remember having problems with shoes. Um, I wore flip-flops were the only things. I had some like, adjustable flip-flops that I had, and that was the only shoe I could get over the bandaging. Um, but generally, my leg felt a lot better with the compression on. Um, my veins felt much more supported and I was happy to have the compression because I knew that it was doing good. Mm. And, and that first instance, you did manage to heal, didn't you, in a relatively quick time frame? Yeah. And, and at that time, we only had four layer compression bandaging. How long were you healed then um, and what happened next? Um, I think I was healed for around three years. Um, what happened next was I went on holiday. By then I'd had my second child, my daughter, um, and we'd gone to Portugal. Um, anyway, I banged my leg on the plane on the way home. Um, it had been fine the whole time we'd been away. And it had been, apart from the, as I said before, the paper thin skin um, and the sort of the, the delicate skin around my ankle, it had been okay for those few years. Um, so I banged my leg, came home, and within a few hours, it went from a tiny dot to like the size of a 50 pence piece in the same place as before. And I ended up actually in hospital that time on IV antibiotics because it had got infected very quickly and, and was opening up very quickly. And then you came and saw me on the ward, I believe, and you were like, oh, it's you again. <laughs> <laughs> And, and we got you back into compression relatively quickly that time, um, but it did take you some time to heal. How long were you suffering with that recurrence of that leg ulcer? Um, well, my son is 20 and it finally healed last year. Um, so he will have been 19. So it was 13 years that time. I think during that time, it may have healed briefly um, for a couple of months. Um, but yeah, it was a majority of that 13 year period. But just to point out to others that are watching this, that's relatively unusual. Tracy is my most difficult of case that I've managed. Um, most patients, even on second or third occurrence, we can get them healed within a matter of weeks. Um, but Tracy, you had quite complex disease, didn't you? You had to travel down to London for a little operation on your veins by a vein specialist. Um, and throughout all of that time, you were in compression therapy. Um, but we had multiple treatments on your leg, didn't we, in terms of dressings? Um, I think that you had every single dressing ever invented on the market. What, what was your <laughs> opinion of all of these dressings? What was my opinion? Sorry. Yeah. Well, it, every time you would say, oh, there's this new dressing out, we'd like to try this dressing, we'd like to try this treatment, we'd like to try this cream, we'd like to, whatever it was, there was always that bit of hope that this would be the one that would work because obviously the companies making the, the treatments and the dressings, they're very confident in their own products. So I was always very full of hope when, when we'd start a new one. And what we would tend to find is that for a few weeks, things would improve. 
and then we'd get to a point it would come to a standstill and then sometimes it would get worse again and then we'd perhaps try another one or go back to what we were using before it was it was very frustrating and as a patient I found it just amazing that there were so many products available so many different types of products for wounds and for leg ulcers but it took us a long long time to find the one that actually did work and, and and the difficulty is that is that the wound products there is no clear evidence that one is better than the other and hence why it sometimes feels like your nurse is is playing of picking off the shelf what could we try next and you know tracy i'll hold my hands up and say at times um i didn't know what to do with you so i was throwing things at you because i just couldn't understand why we couldn't get you to heal and um, so you know the more evidence we get in terms of which product is the right would be great the thing we know that works is compression therapy and once you have full compression therapy on you really hope that these wounds go on to heal and um, just to reiterate you are an unusual case uh, but we did finally get you to heal um, um about 18 months ago now can i I'll just explore because Whilst I've been working with you with Legs Matters, um, I've learnt more and more. I saw you on a regular basis, but knowing you personally, I've learnt so much more about the impact of this. So, you know, in your in your in, in when it was really bad for you, just tell me some of the stories in terms of how have this impacted your day to day life. Well, certainly when the children were small, um, it was incredibly hard to keep upbeat all the time. Um, I did try because being a mum is like my number one passion and I would give everything and I'd put everything into that. But it was hard. I was on a lot of painkillers. Um, I was in a lot of pain still. Um, I had this constant aching in my leg. Um, I couldn't do a lot with the children in regards of um, swimming, um, things like trampolining you know, ice skating, uh, just the sledging, things that they want to do um, throughout the year, things like soft play areas, even things like going on playgrounds and things, because I couldn't risk banging my leg. And a lot of times I couldn't wear the appropriate footwear you have to wear for certain activities. Um, it was it was really hard and it was hard being on that amount of pain relief while I was in charge of two small children as well. So what I'd find is I'd sometimes sort of take them to the cinema and I'd find myself dozing off during the day which which is a scary thought when you think about it mm. I, I can remember me and you having a time in clinic where we were constantly talking about footwear because you were taking the kids to see santa claus up in greenland and you were obsessed of how you were going to get this bandage into a snow boot and, and what solutions could we come up with and, and and i know we've had other conversations about you going to florida to disneyland with the kids what could you wear and you wanted to go swimming with them with the dolphins and what could you wear um, and and it, and it and all of that you know that must have been terrifying in a way as a mum to, to think that you were going to have to be the one that was sat on the sideline yeah it was and that was why I was determined to still do those things because it would have been easy for me to say right well we can't go there and we can't go there but it's not it's not fair on the children um so I did do as best as I could and that particular time when we went to Lapland I had to have a size 10 boot on my left leg just to get around the bandaging. And luckily the people that were providing the snowsuits and the boots, they were really nice about it. And they let me have two different sizes, you know, but that could have been a different case. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it has been frustrating at times not being able to do things for the children and, and to say, I'm really sorry that I can't do that, but I've tried to make adaptions and I've tried to involve other people um, with certain activities so that they didn't miss out. Yeah, I think, as always, Tracy, I think you always put other people first. And, you know, when you wrote me that story in terms of how did this impact and you told me that this leg ulcer had stolen your career, stolen the person that you wanted to be and, and stolen your self-confidence, that really hammered it home to me as a practitioner what the true impact is. But you did something similar, didn't you, recently with your kids? You asked your kids what their memories of mum with a leg also were. And you were quite astounded, weren't you, of what they told you? Yeah, my daughter in particular, she said she remembers 
a time when I was walking down the stairs and there was blood leaking from my leg. And, and the time she's talking about, she was only about five. And she said she remembers me sort of walking through and leaving a, a sort of trail along as I went. Um, and she said the, in, in the piece that she wrote, she said, but my mum always always was able to give me my pat lunch and take me to school or something like that. So it was like she was aware that there was something going on. But she also knows that I was always still there trying to do my best for her. The time she's talking about um, was this one morning when I'd woken up and, and the I don't know if an artery had sort of broken or what happened, but there was blood sort of spurting out my leg, which thankfully only happened once. And um, I managed to get that sorted fairly quickly when I went up to the hospital. So that wasn't a, an everyday occurrence with that, but um, that's the bit that she remembers that sticks in her mind. And, and those, those um, blood squirts are uncommon, but not overly rare, if you like. And it's not an artery, it's a vein, but the amount of blood that can pour out of the vein, and it does look like it's squirting from the ulcer bed, um, can be very scary indeed, and, and certainly something that you do need urgent treatment for. Um, I know you've had um, many dark times throughout all of this, and, it, and it's brilliant your resilience to be able to work with Legs Matters as a great patient partner. But what would you tell other people that's in that similar situation, that's really in the heart of it, if you like, of their suffering? What would you say to those? Just to, it's hard. It's really hard. And even now, I remember, it's hard for me to remember because I think your, your brain blocks it out to a point. My darkest days, you know, were awful. And thankfully, I'm quite an upbeat person. So I, I didn't get into depression but I imagine a lot of people would with this because it's relentless and you've got sleep deprivation and it affects your social life and your working life and therefore it affects your finances and your diet and then you end up putting weight on and you, you can't move around and there's so many reasons why you would get depressed with this kind of chronic illness but I would I would just say to anyone just try and stick with it and, and really be open to different treatments try new things and and i know not everyone's lucky enough to have someone such as julianne to to have on their side and and to have these treatments put forward so i would say to those patients just try and be assertive if, you, if you're not getting on with the treatment try and explain why if it's painful if you don't like it if, if it's leaking loads and 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 just keep talking communicating and and just try with the compression because it is it is proof that it works and just it, it, you will get there in the end and and, and legs matters as really is demanding that every patient with a venous leg ulcer has access to the right specialist at the right time and that's one of our core aims uh, because it's not fair that if you lose confidence in your practitioner, you know, at, at, at least in your darkest days when we weren't healing you, at least you had confidence in me. I can mm -hmm. imagine if you didn't have confidence in me, on top of it, you would, become, you would go down that rabbit hole of a spiral very, very quickly. Do you think talking's good, Tracy? Because I know you've got a great family. Do, do you think that's you know, it, it, I think COVID, the one thing that has brought us home is that, you know, anxiety and depression is really um, escalated when you're on your own. Yeah, think, absolutely. Um, I think it's really important to talk. And I know that's not easy for everybody if they haven't got a family around them. Um, but if, if there's anybody, <laughs> I can't imagine going through what I went through without people around me. And it was hard having young children, but at the same time, they kept me going. Um, my husband kept me going. My family, my, my mum and, and my siblings, you know, they all were supportive of me. And it must have been really hard for anyone who hasn't got that. So, but I absolutely think it's vital for those people to reach out. And things like Legs Matter will hopefully go, give them somewhere to look, somewhere to go, and see that they're not on their own. And there are other people that are suffering with similar or the same problems brilliant and and just finally um knowing what you know now what would you tell tracy when she was 22 what, what would you have told her um in terms of your experience now <sighs> I know, 
so no. hard. Um, I would just say, just that because at times, you know, I thought that this was it for me. I thought, you know, for the next sixty years or whatever. I'm going to have this leg ulcer. So it's never going to go. I'm just going to have to deal with it. I'm going to have to deal with the, the pain, deal with the, the smell, deal with the fact I can't wear any trendy clothes ever, trendy shoes. I can't socialize with my friends, all those things. I just thought that was it for me. That was my life. Um, so I would say to me at 22 that, yes, you're in for a long haul. You're in for a long journey. But by the time you're 40, <laughs> you will have a somewhat normal leg. <laughs> Something will work for you. I can always remember um, when you had the opportunity to speak to Jean, um, my other patient, who wouldn't mind me sharing her name. Um, Jean also had a leg ulcer from when she was about 30 to when she was about 70. And, and, and I do believe the wisdom comes as you get older. Um, and I can remember Jean saying to you, um, don't let it define you. Yeah. Learn with it. Um, and that's easier said than done, but... I certainly think over the last 10 years, you have learned to live with it and not allow it to define you. And, and whether that's because you've got old uh, or whether that's because you're more knowledgeable with it or that the leg ulcers got better, I don't know. But I certainly think that, you know, you are Tracy. Every patient we meet, we have to remember that they are an individual and they should never be defined by the leg ulcer. And what we need to do is everything we possibly can to really minimise those impacts that you've described in terms of your quality of life. Mm. Trish, thank you so much for joining us for this Legs Matters Natter. Um, <laughs> providing your insight is just absolutely uh, fantastic. So me and Tracy are around now live. Um, we've pre-recorded this just to be on the safe side, but we are available now live. If you've got any questions, um, Tracy has got true lived experience. It's very different than a practitioner talking about how to live with a leg ulcer. So Tracy and I are around now for the next 10, 15 minutes. If you've got any questions, please start posting them and we'd love to have some conversations with you. Thanks for listening. Every time I, I listen to you, Tracy, I I learn something new. I learn a different depth. And um, just thank you uh, for being <clears throat> so brave, so open, so sharing. Um, you are a, a warrior, an ambassador. Call you what you like. I just take my hat off for you to you because there is nothing like that lived experience. You know, we may look good at this from a clinical academic point of view but you're the only one that's truly you know you are the one that this affects in every waking moment of the day and and I urge every professional out there you know to share this click it share it like it because we need more clinicians to understand the real impact from the real lived experience so so Tracy there's just been a, a there's been a couple of questions that's come through so um Nurses talk a lot about non-compliance um, of patients with leg ulcers, so naughty patients, let's say. What, what are your thoughts on this non-compliance? Well, actually, I had never heard of non-compliance until very recently, um, but really, I feel quite shocked about it. I, I don't believe that a clinician can call a patient non-compliant without really getting to the root of why they're not following that particular treatment, whether it's the compression, whether they're not, you know, washing their leg, whether they're not um, getting on with a particular dressing, whatever it is, they need to communicate first with the patient and find out what the problem is. Because I would challenge any clinician or anyone to live with one first before they say that a patient is non-compliant because they've taken their compression off at the end of the day when their leg is absolutely killing them. Yeah, and uh, it's a huge bugbear of, of, of mine and many of, 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 of the coalitions that sit on legs matters that really there is no such thing as non-compliance. It's all about we haven't got the treatment plan right that the patient can have. Um, so um, that um, it, it, another question that we've had up um, is that um, saying that um, first off saying how brave you are to share your your real lived experience um, and what would you say to people out there who's got a leg ulcer but are finding it difficult to tap into a 
healthcare practitioner that, that seems to be listening to them. What, what advice would you give those people? Well, first of all, my heart actually breaks for those people because as I said in the video, I can't imagine having gone through what I've been through and having you supporting me every step of the way. I cannot imagine what it's like for someone who goes to their, their GP and gets fobbed off. I just, I can't even imagine what they're going through. But I would say now that places like Legs Matter exist, arm themselves with the information that they need and take it to the GP and say, look, this is what should be happening. I believe I've got a leg ulcer. I need to be seen by a specialist. Yeah, and and we've, we've just, um, we've had a, a couple of questions. Um, well, a, a question I'm just saying, what do you think about us calling you a little warrior? Um, do you do you do you mind this? I don't mind, and I think the way I look at it is, I can hopefully give the clinicians an insight into what it's actually like to to live with a leg ulcer, and I feel like that's my position within Legs Matter, and that's what I hope to bring, so that I can then help other patients. Um, I do think I've battled through it. You know, I've had it a long period of my life and it's affected my life in, in so many ways. But funnily enough, I've got, I'm full of admiration for all of the other people on Legs Matter because they've achieved so much within their careers. So I have to keep reminding myself that I am equal. And I know you all treat me as equal on, on the panel and, and, and within Legs Matter. But to me, you're the ones that have achieved these, these great things. Oh, oh, Tracy, no, we haven't. Um, you, th there's no greatness. All, all we are is a bunch of um, enthusiastic, passionate nurses that wants every single individual out there to get the right care at the right time. Because leg ulcer management is relatively simple, but we seem nationally to be getting it so wrong. Um, and we want to really call out that we need to be not doing, the NHS needs to be doing all we can to stop that elongation of patient suffering. But, you know, the, the, the true warriors of all of this is actually the patients that we serve. Um, and, you know, I know that you've given so much of your own time now back to helping raise this important awareness that you're helping looking at what research questions do we need to answer in terms of what is the right dressing to put on. You're helping to formulate how we speak to patients in terms of education and leaflets and how that communication is at that right level you're helping us in terms of looking at of new devices of what type of compression is being invented out there and what are your thoughts on it so you give so so much back after all of the suffering that you've had and um, to me that sorry to interrupt to me that's really important though because as you know i was actually training to be a nurse when i first got my D dbt so I can't do that anymore. I can't stand for, for long periods. And obviously, you know, that time for me has gone. So this is my way to, to give that bit back. So it, that's why it's so important to me to, to be asked to be involved with things like Legs Matter, because it's, it's just my way of hopefully changing things in the future for other patients. Oh, and your contribution, my dear, is absolutely massive. And every single one of the clinicians on the on the on the Legs Matters uh, coalition takes his hat off to you because we think that you are inspirational and amazing. There's just been a final question that's been coming in in terms of your compression therapy. So you've had a lot of compression therapy over a lot of period of time, bandages and stockings and whole different shapes and sizes of those. Um, how have you coped or have you noticed that at times the more active that you've got the more slippage that you get and have you got any hints or tips of actually keeping them into the right position I think it's about finding the right compression for you so over the years I've tried many different man of, uh, many different brands of um, ulcer kits compression kits and I found one now that fits me perfectly um, and that particular one stays up 95% of the time I don't have that issue anymore um, but I know when I have had the issue before that it's it, it's very painful when they roll down and they leave these dents in your leg um, so I would advise a patient to try try a different brand if they can get that from their healthcare provider because it might just be a different fit is better for them. Yeah and that, and that kept question came from the Facebook live that's being streamed at the same time and and I would just like to reiterate that um, we all buy our tights 
from different shops. Just because one pair of tights doesn't fit you well or rolled down, it doesn't mean that you're non-compliant. It simply means that we haven't got either the fit right, the type of material, or the actual brand that we want to use. So, you know, there are hundreds of different variations of compression garments out there. All of them should be comfortable and all of them should stay in position. Just because we haven't got it right first time doesn't mean that you're never going to be able to get a good fit in stock in. It's just about working with your clinician to find the, the right garment at the right time. So, um, Tracy, um, our time is up. It's been a very, very quick 30 minutes. Um, I would just like to say um, from myself personally and from the whole of the Legs Matters Coalition, thank you for everything you do. You are an inspiration to me. No, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an absolute. It's been an absolute pleasure for you all joining us. I hope you've enjoyed this, um, and I'm just going to leave the final words for Tracy. Um, thank you for listening. Is all I can say, and I hope that this Legs Matter Awareness Week really gets the message through to people because everyone deserves a Leanne in their life. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, no way not in a million years oh, one, one Leanne is enough for the whole of the universe I can promise you that <laughs> thank you so so much for watching um, have a great evening and thanks again for supporting Legs Matters